How's it going everybody? Long time no see. So it's been about a month now. I am in need of a haircut still. Someone even commented on one of my videos saying that I'm starting to look a little bit like Bill Watrous. Um, I'm hoping next time around I'll be at least somewhat trimmed up. Okay, so moving on. Today I'm talking a little bit about exploring technique on the trombone via articulation. And the purpose of this video is to give a little bit of insight into breaking down technical aspects of your playing as well as investigating some of the possibilities through trial and error. So this is something that can help with things like playing in the right style, obtaining clarity in your playing, as well as uh, developing your own unique and personal sound. Now, I think a lot of folks out there who are self-taught might already be doing some of this, but I know everyone isn't, and if you're studying with a teacher, you may not be doing as much of this as you should. The thing is that if you're studying with a teacher, they can only give you so much. A lot of it you have to take her in the practice room yourself. So let's go ahead and apply this to the context of articulation. So when it comes to playing in the right style with regards to articulation, let's take the legato tongue and apply it in a couple of situations. The first might be, let's say, a Bordonia Rochu etude. You probably don't want to be tonguing like this when you play some of your passages. And you probably don't want to do something like this. The first one was a little more on the aggressive side, and the second one was a little more on the passive side and almost non-existent. So sit down for a minute and explore your legato tongue. Maybe let's just start on the first note of that chromatic passage on the G. When you find something that works, go ahead and uh, put it back into context. Now you can apply the same concept to a jazz ballad or something that's a little bit smoother in the context of jazz. Now on the other end of the spectrum, let's take a passage that might be a little more on the aggressive side. So if, if we take those same notes, and do something that's marcato. Yeah, I'm okay with that, but um, I'm going to toy around with my marcato articulation a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it back into context once I found something that I like. And of course you can apply this in a jazz setting as well, say for example a shout section in a big band chart. So this is also going to help you obtain clarity in your playing. So to develop this further, what you're going to want to do is record whatever it is you're wanting to improve upon in terms of clarity, uh, whether it's a transcription, a solo piece, an etude, etc. Let's take this line, for example. So once I've recorded this, whether it's on your phone, on a microphone, on your computer, etc., whatever it is, it doesn't matter the quality, but you want to hear back and get some real feedback that you can't yourself have since you can't sit there and listen to yourself. You're going to make notes of any articulation that's unclear, spots that you want to clear up. Take note of it, listen back, and sit there and toy around with it until you kind of find something you want. And in this entire process, as you're testing and toying with things, um, you can go ahead and record, or you can kind of 
fiddle through things until you find something that you like and then record. So I'll mess around with that for a second. Maybe the first thing I'll do is slow it down. And you repeat the process until you find something that works for you. So earlier I mentioned that this can help you with developing a unique and personal sound. So one example of this could be maybe sitting down and selecting a solo passage and using varying degrees of articulation as you're doing this. I mean, as you're doing this, if I take that last passage, for example, it's actually from uh, one of Charlie Parker's solos on uh, Cherokee, I think maybe from the 1943 version, I forget which year. It's just him and guitar. And it's the thing he does over the bridge of Cherokee in a different key, of course. So one thing you can do is play around with your tongue placement, you know, in terms of where you put it in, on your teeth, on your gums, higher and lower. I'll start with the first note. This is a, a little closer to the opening where my teeth meet. And I'll kind of slide up and down. Now, right, th right there at the end, it was on my gums pretty high up. Those are the two extremes, teeth and gums. So I think where I like it, in this case, is probably a little bit on the gums. I mean, you can also think of it in terms of syllables, more da 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 da, instead of uh, th 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 th, a little closer to that, and everything in between, of course. You can also use more air in your attack that also affects articulation and the sound of the note that comes out. So you can also use aural imagery to help produce the sound and articulation that you'd like. Maybe, for example, a, a cellist striking the the string with a bow very aggressively. That could be one example. So anyway, as you're doing this, you're going to want to record and just follow the same process that we did earlier until you find something. And actually, the next step is once you find something, keep practicing it that way until it becomes uh, second nature and subconscious. That's when it becomes a part of your playing, and that's how you start to develop your own personal and unique sound. So the cool thing about this concept of exploration is that you can go ahead and apply it to other aspects of your technical playing, including tone, timbre, slide technique, rhythm, and so on. So that's everything for this video. If you liked it and you found it interesting, please like it and share it and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. If you have any questions or comments or feedback or requests, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. And otherwise, we'll see you all next month and hopefully with the, my hair a little shorter. So peace.